Okay, folks, welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm Mike, your main host and my co-host, Morris. How you doing, Morris? Ready for another episode? <laughs> I'm still alive and I'm in considerably less rum than we had last time. So. Yeah, me too. So, hit it, brother. Yep. <laughs> Recently, uh, from previous episodes, you know, we, we were very into the adventure a card game. Uh, it finally came out to where you can actually order it now. Uh, if you go to ulyssiusspiele.com, I think it's usa.com or something like that. But it, it'll be in the show notes. But anyways, uh, I went there and I ordered the, the, the set and I accidentally ordered two of one piece. And... I contacted them and they automatically fixed it for me. So great customer service people. It, yeah, great. That's my shout out. So thank you, Eric Simon from Ulysses Spiel. Yeah, thanks again, Eric. <laughs> exactly. Well, we, uh, hey, it, it was looking like, out. For, I, no. I didn't even notice it until like a day or two after I ordered it. It's like, oh shit. So I hurried up and I, you know, I I texted or emailed him back and he said, yeah. It hasn't gone out to the, the order yet, and I think I can fix this. And then just today, he said, yeah, well, we, we were able to catch it in time, so we're sending you whatever. Now, the bad news is that that um, I had bought a whole bunch of lenses and other kit for myself, and uh, I, Mike was saying, if I can't get it fixed, I'll give you the one that I ordered the duplicate of, or like we were going to negotiate on what the price for it would be. So nah, I'll just give it to you. I, I'm out on this deal, but <laughs> I'll pick it up later. Well, we're going to try to, maybe uh, in a few weeks, we're going to have some friends over, and we're going to do a big gaming weekend, so maybe we'll get some more, uh, you know, adventure uh, filming in there, hopefully. We'll try. We're going to get some, you know, up close and personal with some of our other gaming friends, at least. Yeah, so I'll put the link to the Adventuria card game in the notes below the video. You're free to check them out at any time. Um, my shout-out is to Alex, who, yes, we're paying attention to the comments that you guys send us, as well as... The emails that you are surely sending to volantrix at gmail.com. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's me. That's Alex, me. That's me. Alex, who listened to us talk about mega corporations at the end of the one episode, was uh, Death to Zerka. And I'm like, does he mean what I think he means? And sure enough, I went to original S Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And uh, yes, Kashyyyk will rise again. You're damn right. Because. <laughs> The damn people so, come. Thank you, Alex. I think we've met you. I think you're one of Eric's friends. So there you go. <laughs> they come. They come to the planet, Mike. They don't even. They don't even speak the language. They're practically empire. I mean. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, and Avador Corp must go down. That's all we'll say. <laughs> and they're not even evil. They're not just. They're just. I just. It's like Walmart. I, they're not evil. They're just in the way. So there you go. Evil is in the eye of the beholder, my friend. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, most. Beholders are evil, so there you go. So anyway, right. anti-corporation pro Wookie, and uh, our comes, anti well anti-corporation comes in a lot in the next topic we're going to talk about today. Yeah, which good, is Shadowrun. Good segue. Yes, I thought so. That's why I did it. So, but yes, Shadowrun. Yeah, so Shadowrun I'm looking. Is cool. I'm looking That's at the I'm well. We played it at uh, Planet Origins. Yeah. Or origin, sorry, um, and we we got a okay first taste of that. If Doug hadn't been punching small children through grocery store aisles, <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But it was fun. But, we may uh, be talking about that in a future episode. Yeah, so, so I'm looking at yeah you know, if we can get him to comment. He was on a street samurai, what, folks. He was a street samurai. That doesn't make it okay. <laughs> well, I know. I'm just saying. He could, have, he could have been a... Here, I'm going to throw an obscure one out for you. He could have been a samurai pizza cat. It still wouldn't have made it okay. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. So it's all good. 
Anyway, uh, the 80s and 90s was, was a wonderful time for cartoons. Yes. So I'm looking at our, our core rule book here, and it tells me everything has a price, Mike. Well, I I really like the core rule book in some ways, and in other ways I'm like, why did you do it that way? You know, so... But I'm used to Pathfinder slash D&D and the way they organize things. Well, one of the complaints um, that I think you had had was the way that it's organized. I was going through it, I'm like, that's eh, not that different from every other RPG I've seen, except for then I started paging through it about the point I thought that. That's usually when you're proven wrong. And I saw yeah, yeah. one of the stories just, just derailed what I was reading. It's like okay, I understand that this is probably going to tell me something that's related to the text I just read, but there's got to be a better way to organize it. the other way around. Yeah. For instance, well, every every chapter, or they don't even call them chapters, they call them sections, I believe. So section one starts out with a story. Section two starts out with a story, and so on and so forth. And usually the story is related to the next chapter. Uh, like the my favorite chapter was the Decker chapter, which is your, hey, this is your cyber people, and they, you know, they hack the net, and they do all this stuff, and they do it all with equipment, and they're just normal humans with, you know, whatever. That's my favorite chapter. And the chapter that started that one out was pretty amazing, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I also like the very first story, in the, in which, is, which is, I think is a broad overview of the way the game works. But I, the game is... This this game has rules for everything. Which can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Um, also, we're running it's on... It's nice, except the fact, remembering where that rule is. That's the yeah. only problem I have with this. Well, we're running on 5th edition on this, uh, apparently. This is 5th edition Shadowrun, yes. Yeah. Um, I only really have 5th edition. I played earlier editions, but it was so long ago, I don't even remember what edition it was. I think it was 2nd edition was the first time I ever played. So that's, you know... We've had a few iterations. 90s, maybe? So it's been a long time. Sounds about right. <laughs> well, it came out like 80, in the late 80s, the, the first edition, and then 2nd edition came out. The 2nd edition was pre relatively new when I first played it. Yeah, so some of the things have held up well over time for a dystopian future. Right. Other ones, not so much. I mean, definitely mega corporations, maybe not all Japanese like we thought they were going to be back in the 80s. Um, Quite a bit of them are actually Japanese and Chinese and whatnot. But yeah. yeah. But then another thing that we're looking at, well, like Zaibatsu, that's in the terminology, and that's a real thing, where they were mm -hmm. like these mega corporations that usually were conglomerates that included pharmaceuticals and, you know whatever other divisions warfare stuff gets a little far out there in science fiction but it's not that much of a stretch from the real world yeah, it's, there's basically the way it is they're called mega corporations mega corporations won the world so the entire world is an oligarchy and there's 10 top corporations that basically i mean they're more powerful than normal governments and i believe they call this the sixth world, if I remember correctly. I yes. think you're right. Six or seven. Six, so, but anyways, anyways, basically what happened is that magic came back into the world, and now you have all these people that run around with, with magical abilities. So you have dragons running around, you have trolls. So, oh, that's probably we should mention the five main races, which are humans, dwarves, elves, orcs, and trolls. Those are your five main races. So that brings me to another thing uh, here that, I, especially when I was looking through the glossary, which I, I know you said you had really liked. I love the glossary with <laughs> the different terminologies for different things, yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking at uh, stuff like chummer, which is a slang for buddy. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, what was it that they had was derogatory for L Slot. Well, I like slot because, you know, that's a woman's vagina. But, yeah, whatever. <laughs> We're an adult podcast, folks. Didn't you figure that uh, out by now? <laughs> I'm not saying it was necessarily appropriate. But well, actually, okay, here's the okay. weird thing that I have not verified. It's a BuzzFeed video, but usually they're the accurate. Years, was it, I think, for elves? But so, yeah. usually they're accurate uh, in BuzzFeed. Oh, yeah, they're very, well, in Buzz, you, you uh, think about the word terminology. Damn it. Kind of, but, yeah. Stop and listen. <laughs> 
Sorry. Sorry Stop, Marshall. collaborate, and listen. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> so usually in the BuzzFeed videos, they're pretty accurate that they, they had one on slang words, which is the type of thing I always get excited about. Oh, a new piece of little knowledge. And apparently uh, vagina actually was originally slang for a sheath for a sword. Mm -hmm. So yep. fi file that one away for later, kids. Yeah, I actually saw that somewhere too, and I just didn't think about it until you mentioned it. But yeah. Um, but no, what what was it? I'm looking through the glossary, and it's always whenever you're whenever you're on record, you never find what you're looking for. But it was something like uh, posy eater or you know something like that. Yeah, was there... yeah it's something like flower <laughs> eater or something. Maybe, was a derogatory <laughs> term yeah. for elves. I, I I was thinking leaf eater, but yeah. Posy eater, something like that. Flowery. It's very similar to that. That's the thing. It's it's two pages of basically slang words, and then later that later in the book, there's actually another two pages of like slang for the internet and stuff like, or well, as they call it, the Matrix, because it's the Matrix. But as we meander away from what I was meaning to ask you, yes. like I always do, um, where? Shadowrun supposed to take place because I was pretty sure it was supposed to take place in like San Francisco. I know there's like uh, a China. Actually, Seattle. Seattle is the main Seattle? campaign world. Okay. Um, you can still do things in like Denver. There's multiple work. There's multiple cities that they also give details for. Yeah. But the base, the base campaign setting takes place in in Seattle. Well, I know that there's an isometric game that I neither have money nor quite enough encouragement yet to play. That I believe takes place in Hong Kong. Um, which uh, I know there's a lot of Hong Kong stuff in this one too. Hong yeah. Kong's one of the other settings, but yeah. Yeah, I figured as much from that. What I found funny is they were talking about the main city in which Pathfinder takes place in at least one part when I was reading through the core rulebook. Yeah, I thought that was pretty amusing, honestly. <laughs> so, well, because uh, where Pathfinder is is a suburb of Seattle, which I. For the life of me, I cannot remember the name of the city off the top of my head right, right oh, now. Okay, but... okay. I was like Pathfinder, the the like the uh, actual no, where planet? Pathfinder is based, where their their <laughs> company, <laughs> where is. Paizo is. So where Paizo is based is takes place in the city, which I'll probably remember it like you know twenty minutes into the podcast. But yeah, yeah, that kind of thing happens. Yeah, why did we do that? That's what happens when you're a nerd. So uh, and old and can't remember things. That's me. <laughs> Don't, don't, I hate when people tell me that. Like, it's like, oh, you'll forget more stuff when you get old. Don't tell me that. I already have a crappy memory, and I'm in my 30s. I had a crappy memory back in my 20s. Of course. You're 30. You're old. <laughs> but not, not as old as me, but you know. But not buried yet, damn it. <laughs> See, the sad part is that that, that that city's right on the tip of my tongue right now, and I just, I, for the life of me, I can't remember. Sorry, Pathfinder folks, because I love you. But yeah, which that's probably going to be an upcoming episode, which will be the Book of the Dam. But yeah, okay. so just to let that fly, because that's a pretty cool book, actually, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, tell me about Mr. Johnson, Mike, because that's an interesting thing. Mr. Johnson is basically, well, if you want to think about it, it's, it's your DM. It's the guy that gives you the quest where, hey, uh, I give you the job that you need to do. So, and they just basically generically name you Mr. Johnson, which I, okay, that's cool. That's kind of neat. Um, it's easy. Basically, they just use Mr. Johnson as a slang for your DM, your quest giver. I can live with that. You know what I mean? It's something, it's something unique to Shadow One, so, yeah. Hey, it's cool. interestingly Mission Impossible to me. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well, because you don't know if Mr. Johnson's an asshole or he's actually truthful and trying to get some help. You know what I mean? It's, or actually, that opens it up to, depending on what kind of sadistic DM you would have, not that I'm saying you should do this, but uh, you could have multiple Mr. Johnsons who maybe give you quests that are at odds with one another, and maybe one quest does something that'll make another quest for you worse if you follow their well, orders. Yeah. Well, it's, like I said, Mr. Johnson is not necessarily the same person every time. It's Whoever wasn't, decides to give you that quest at that specific time. Wasn't there some so, sort of uh, scrambler or something for posting the Shadowrun missions? What's that? Am I, I, I may be, I've had too many friends tell me about Scanner Darkly recently, but <laughs> no, wasn't there some kind of scrambler that makes you unable to identify who Mr. Johnson is? 
Uh, not as, well, I'm, I, I suppose there is something like that. But most of the time, you know who he, well, by sight, you can say, well, that's Mr. Johnson. But like I said, it could be a Mr. Johnson this time, could be a six foot eight fucking troll, and the next guy could be a five foot 11 elf. It just depends on who the person is at the time. They just randomly go by that random name just so you can't basically turn them in, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, you're Mr. Blue. You're Mr. Brown. Why well, I gotta be Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown's a shit color. Pretty much. Or Mr. Pink. He, you know, even worse. But yes. <laughs> what, what the fuck have I gotta be Mr. Pink? I love the response in that movie, too. Steve uh, Buscemi, baby. Re- Reservoir Dogs, folks, if you haven't seen it. It's like, why well, I gotta be Mr. Pink? Because you're a faggot, all right? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, not that we, uh, you know. We like gay people, we like straight people, we like them all. We're just saying that's what happened in the movie, so <laughs> don't uh, send us any hate mail, folks, please. We, did, we were talking about vaginas a minute ago. I mean, is it possible to get uh, more offensive and vulgar? But talking about vaginas is not hate speech, though. So. <laughs> you know I mean? so, you know what I'm saying? So if you construed anything that I said at any moment as hate speech, kids, let us know <laughs> at well, at gmail.com. <laughs> We're not trying to offend people. Just, it just, just happens naturally. Just, or like me, I tend to stick my foot in my mouth when I'm trying to be funny. So uh, yes. it might not be funny to everyone, but somebody else. Well, you know, know. To, to say a, a Dennis Miller thing is like we've always had, a, he, he thought, and this is one of the, there's plenty of things recently that I disagree with Dennis Miller's viewpoints, but right. uh, he had one bit where he was talking about how it was like, I'll bet. When the tall magi smacked his head off of the beam in the in the the barn Major. going to visit Jesus, that in the manger, yes, yeah, that uh, Joseph took a moment to stop thinking about who impregnated his wife to laugh his little carpenter ass off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like anybody can offend you at any specific time. I'm so, just saying we folks are not trying out to yes. offend anybody. All I'm, all I'm arguing... If we do offend you, please let us know, because we'll try to correct it. Let, yeah, no, we will, but here. let's keep it moving along. I'm just saying that yes. like some of the best of hu- best humor is offensive humor. Well, sometimes. It depends <laughs> what it is. If it, if it doesn't hurt you personally, it's fine. Yeah, if it's not a personal attack, that's the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I've heard things people say... I, I I love blonde jokes. I'm blonde, so I love. Them. I, the more I can get, the more I can shove out to my friends. You know what I mean? But I think it's humorous because if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at, folks? That's basically where I'm at at this point, and uh, we should, probably should continue. Anyways, yep. Next. So how about these corporations, Mike? So I'm looking at corporations. Namely, there's the Big Ten. Yeah. Um, you got Aries Macro Technology. Yep. Um, you got uh, as technology, which okay. Aztec, I kind of don't like so much, but yeah. <laughs> I wonder what uh, pantheon they are based off of. <laughs> You've got Evo Corporation, who apparently is evolve is their motto of sorts. Well, they're the people that do technology for cyber tech and all that kind of crap. I think, if I remember correctly, are they those weirdos that's like we got to take your orders? They're the guys that made Doug's arms to punch babies. Yeah, but are they the weirdos who are also like you know you need to get rid of your heart and get that Yamaha heart because your heart's not good enough, you stupid fleshy? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think so. So uh, we've got Horizon Group. Uh, they're based out of Los Angeles. Don't in remember the them. Media Wonderland. Uh, I have. I've only glanced over this stuff, so I've only I've looked at the name. Mostly but... glanced over that because it's been a while. Well, it's not that I glanced over; it's been a while since I've read that part. So, Mitsa... I'm way you know five, ten chapters away from where you're at at this point. Uh, but yeah, uh, Mitsushima Computer I Technologies. I kind of like them actually. Okay. Uh, They're not. They don't annoy me as as much as some of the other tech, basically. I think out of all the corporations, I like them the best. I don't know why. It just I do. Because Japanese geishas? What? I you know, I don't know. They just <laughs> the things they're focused on don't seem to be as ridiculous as some of the other ones. Basically. Oh yeah. So there's good ones and bad ones. You're saying they're not well, all. Well, I wouldn't even say that. There's less bad. Yeah. 
you know, they're the lesser of the ten evils sort of thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, neon net, or neo net rather. Neo net, yeah. I've Not added sure an extra net in there. Uh, Renraku Computer Systems. I don't think they're that bad either. Uh, Shader Krupp Heavy Industries. Don't like them. I don't like the uh, the Sioux Indian tribe people either too much. I'm sorry, Sioux Indian tribe, but yeah. It's a fictional thing. Don't take it so yeah. seriously. Uh, it's based on real life because they're just, I, they're dickies. They're into like shady magic and that sort of thing. And I'm just kidding. Let's see. Shiawasi Corporation. Not sure about that one. Oldest and first Megacorp. Uh, classic Japanese Zaibatsu. Okay, family style, so that means Yakuza. Uh, yep. There isn't a Yakuza one, yeah. Wuxing Incorporated, which looks like somewhere between a tulip and a phoenix in their symbol. Chinese. Oh, that's got to be a lotus blossom if they're Chinese. That's what that is. Okay. I think the Chinese and the Japanese guys don't bother me at all. I think they should have put an X in front of that. Just saying. I, I realize this is American writers, but... <laughs> Zhu Wuxing or some such. Uh, we got Mafias, we got Yakuza's, we got your triads. Pretty much every mob member you can think of, combine it with a corporation, and you kind of got that going on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's talk... The Aztec people might be the Sioux Indians that I'm thinking of, so... Well, that's quite... The Indian, a, they might be the Indian tribe, I'm trying to think. That's like quite... Like I said, I could be wrong with the Sioux, but yeah. That's quite a difference, because if we're talking, like, Sioux Indian Mayan, that's fine. If we're talking Aztec, we're not above ripping your heart out and kicking you down some stairs. To be fair, the Mayans did the same thing, but not as great as the Aztecs. <laughs> I so, think, yeah, uh, I think it was a lot worst more prevalent. Far was the Incas when it comes to that, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I just I remember the Aztecs were not very chill people. Let's put it that uh, way. They mostly they all did some kind of human sacrifice of some sort. It just the the amount of it is basically the difference between the frauds, basically. Well, Mayans did very little of it compared to anybody else. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to say that I'd Isaac... I'd rather stick with Mayans than I would ask Isaac. Isaac was supposed to have been left by Isaiah as a burnt offering. So don't you start <laughs> yeah, thinking that we're all above that. <laughs> Had it suited. Anyways, you're probably on a move all the to do something else. <laughs> Be offensive to all religions equally, Mike. That's my goal. Uh, so let's. What's the wizarding end of things like in this? Because it's a lot more tech and hacking. But I know typically, there, well, you do have magic types. There's adepts, which adepts basically can modify their bodies to do. You know, use magic to modify their bodies to do like superhuman shit. So like, oh, I modify my strength so I can get ass, or you know, whatever. And then you have your something else other than adepts. Um, it's basically your wizardy types. They're sorcerers, whatever. There's a bunch of different types of magic. Like there's the physical magic where, like the adepts, which is more like your uh, shamans, your shaman like uh, Indian tri tribes that hey, we, you know we beef up our you know our, our strengths and that sort of thing. Where you have wizards that you know fling magic out of the air back. But then you also have magic -y types as in Technomancers, which you can hack into the net without actually having equipment. So there's like four different types of magics. Technomancers, your, your adepts, your uh, shamans, I think is one, and can't remember what the other one is called, but yeah. So, so just, just to yeah. go full frontal on this podcast, uh, how awesome is the virtual sex? In this future setting. <laughs> uh, they include it, which is more than I can say for most things. So uh, so if I can figure out where it is. You can have virtual money. sex if you want to. It's, it's in there. It's, they so, don't really go into detail. Uh, as, as they, as as they far shouldn't. As I've read so far, I'm sure there's a book out there for that song. It's but, like, you know, yeah, they're going to make a... a a book of Shadowrun erotic fantasy. But 
It's like I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's the kind no. of thing where it's like I don't. I feel you do not need to go into depth on that because uh, if you understand the mechanics of it, other you than other than I'm, weird fetishes yeah, that we don't need to talk about it. My girlfriend. That's all you really need to know. Mm-hmm. You don't have to. I don't need. If if I want that kind of detail, I'll go watch porn or I'll read porn. It's just that's all right. Write, write your own uh, Pathfinder erotic novel. Exactly. Um, well, I'll just, yeah, I just I'm not going to do it. So, in the game because, the, hey, Bob, I'm going to have sex with your female character. You know, I'm not going to do that. Cause it's, just, it's weird. <laughs> just because Bob is sweaty and with chest hair and smells of Cheetos doesn't mean. <laughs> well, it's weird to me. I don't want to do that. You know, I mean. Hey, if you, if that's your king, that's fine with me. Different, just, I, different I strokes that's for different that sort of folks. So, there you go. <laughs> so the one thing I will definitely want to hit on to this was why I segued to it was because um, I did actually read the header off of this section where the guy's like, I thought about calling this section romance, but threw that out because there ain't nobody doing the carriage ride in the park anymore. And then I thought about <laughs> yeah. calling it dating, but it's not like you can ask a... Uh, Jane, uh, the letter uh, Jane, the leather-clad razor girl, uh, if she'd like to go to the malt shop with you Friday afternoon. It's like, well, maybe I'm the hopeless romantic in here, but fuck you. What is to say I didn't meet a really nice Jane who's agreeable to go to the malt shop with me? You well, bastard! Yeah, you don't know my life. <laughs> Uh, if it's as pathetic as mine, yes, I do. <laughs> so, yeah. Shut up. Just like I was saying in the last podcast, don't destroy my fantasy. It's all I hey, have left. We are doing a, game, a gaming podcast together. That's the extent of my life. So, uh, yeah. What, why is, why is it got to be like this? And, and is there any girls out there that want to date me? I'm fine. <laughs> Not that we fall into the stereotype of single guys who play D&D. <laughs> No, I, I'm not even close to that. I just, <laughs> sometimes I'd rather play D and D than date some of the girls I've met. Maybe that's maybe that's the choice of the girls I've met. But yeah, you know. I don't like to think of it as living in my parents' basement. It's more of a staging area until I take over the world. Exactly. <laughs> And if you believe that, I got a, a bridge not too far from this setting to sell you. <laughs> uh, and I don't live in my parents' basement. I live in the upstairs. <coughs> so I'm one, I'm one step ahead of the rest of you people. <coughs> <laughs> that way your observatory has a clear view to the sky, except, damn it, you can't see. Well, there is that. That's why I live in my parents' house, because I can't see. So... So, other than checking for really weird spellings, you were telling me another thing I see in modes of transportation, that there's uh, actual brand names that appear in this. Yes, they do, like, do, like, Suzuki and Kawasaki, and, well, Kawasaki, I think, is a, or Mitsubishi, I don't remember. But they actually use brand names of some, you know, Japanese, at least Japanese stuff I've seen. It's still impressive to me that they they get away with it, but then uh, I was saying to you, it's like when we go through the Dresden files and he's talking about uh, drinking Coke, it's like, well, I guess so long as you're not using their trademark symbol, you can get away with that to an extent. As long as you're not using it to sell something, I think. <coughs> well, like I say, oh, wow. like, uh, when we played our game at uh, Origins, we all rode Harleys. True, but there's also a certain extent which copyright law uh, is weird. To be fair, these were Harleys that never existed, so... yeah. Yeah, well, I, don't know if that makes me I, I appreciate that our our DM there, I don't know if we mentioned this before on the podcast, but I remember talking about it, wanting to bring it up, was that he made a 6,000 SUX reference in the car that we could potentially attempt to break into. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and he went so far as to, kids, if you're familiar with original 1980s RoboCop, uh, he went so far as to say, this car is protected by Viper, which that triggered another memory in my head, which uh, Rob was playing uh, one of the characters who was going to maybe try and break into the car. He's like, don't touch that car. <laughs> yeah, I think he was playing a Decker, maybe. Yeah. He was playing a Decker or a Technomancer. I'm not sure exactly. See, I thought he and I both picked the face. 
I could be wrong. Oh, maybe. But uh, as soon as it's like, this car is protected by Vipers, like, I remember that commercial in the movie. That all so- shocked the shit out of you. Don't touch it. Well, <laughs> the thing is, Viper was an actual car alarm back in the early 90s when I was in Florida. Yeah. So, because I used to work with a guy that you installed them. So, oh. and like, we get close to the car and say, this car is protected by Viper. Beep, beep, beep. And it would give you, like... I'm going to top down to 10, and if you and, don't get away... And know, some of them would go off back. about stupid stuff like you just parked too close to it. And it's like, it's another car, you fool. So I think they just basically extended that kind of thing out, you know what I mean? Mm. And it worked, because it's what true. The... You know, Viper was a good alarm system back then. Yeah, there's another alarm system that was in that movie that I obviously have forgotten what the name of it was. Oh, yeah, I do too, because I've <laughs> watched Robocop in years. But... Which, it's, it's time. We need to break it out. I've got it on VHS somewhere. I need to find it. I have it on my copy. computer, so it's all good. There we go. But, um... I think want to do it, actually. <laughs> I've been actually thinking about that for a long time, so... They... <laughs> Uh, well, because I have the new Robocop, and I just can't. I, from what I, I hear, I don't think I want to watch it. So I cannot bring to. myself to watch it. I really should. I'm probably going to hate myself every moment. I want to but... just so I can scream and yell at it. But yeah. <laughs> well, I remember talking to somebody on a on internet chat that I was on for reasons that are too difficult to explain. But I I had a surprisingly uh, deep conversation with her talking about how I was like, look, I understand that movies are the product of the era that they are made in, but that does not make this era's RoboCop any more valid than 1980 RoboCop. I'm sorry. (laughs) If it ain't Peter Weller, it ain't for me. Anyways, we probably should uh, move on from what we're doing. Yeah, so tests and limits is what I'm looking at right now, and I know I want to ask you, what the heck are those? Those are like skill checks in Pathfinder. That simple, huh? Eh, pretty much. I mean, there's a little more complication to that. But for me to actually explain it would take longer than this podcast has left. Mm. So, so, yeah, it's a post. But it's, it, it, generally, it's yeah, well, like a test. You, you do a test. It's like, hey, do a based on your strength. Or based so just on like any, any Pathfinder opposed skill check or any of the tests that we do in Dark what? Eye. And based Basically. on your skill level, you can only use so much of those. So, like, oh, I got, you can roll this many dice, but you can only use this many of them. That's your limit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. At least I think that's the way it works, um, because it's been a while, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it means. So a test is basically your skill check, and then the limit is how many dice you can use for the check. So then, before we close it off for this podcast, folks, we wanted to talk about classes. Uh, yep. Where you want to start, Mike? Well, just I, I guess start at the top, which I I believe the first the first class they mentioned is the fix, which is what you like playing. So okay, go ahead, and take her take her away if you if you want. <laughs> If well, you know anything, do you know anything put, about the face? It's put me on the spot here. No, I played it once and I haven't, you know, gone in depth in this yet. So no, I don't really know anything. Okay, your face is basically, it's your bard of the group. It's the guy that goes around, talks to people, gets, negotiates, does all that sort of thing. And these is your, basically your character classes, if you want to call them that, which is as close as you're going to get to calling it, because they don't, you know, you have your face. You know, it's the guy. It's the guy. It's the guy that talks to everybody else and, and negotiates. That's basically all you need to know. Which is my favorite um, part of play. They don't, play, they don't and that's... abilities. They don't get any of that sort of thing. They just get a bunch of skills to use. It's my favorite part of play, and that's all I need to know about it. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, <laughs> that's, that's I was like, okay, more. That's more. So that's all I do I, know about it. This stage. To, I didn't need to know any. And that was the first class. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's more. And then there's other classes, like there's, like I said, there's the wizard types. Um, there's a techno mage, which is your techno mage is he's your guy that can access the matrix, quote unquote, uh, and to be able to access the internet without actually having equipment to do so. So he can just use his mind as a computer to basically access the net. Um, you also have a decker. A decker is another class, which is hey, this is a class that accesses the internet, but it uses equipment to do so. 
So it has a, maybe it has a data pad to do it, a computer, a neural interface, you know, that sort of thing to be able to basically hook up and go into the internet. Um, you also have a rigger. A rigger is a guy that can interface, it's sort of like a Decker, but it can only in interface with like cars and shit. So you can like remotely use your, your mind to, you know, control your car or your vehicle or your, or well, you can do it to use control drones and sort of that sort of thing. So he's like your mechanic machine empathy guy is what you're telling me. Yeah. He basically can control other, like he's the guy on like, uh, well, you know, Deckers can do this to a certain degree too. Well, Deckers can do it better actually, but also riggers get other, or, uh, Decker, or, no, riggers, riggers can get other things besides the just, a, hey, I can interface with shit kind of stuff. So they get, they all have their own little speciality kind of thing. Like your wizard. Like your, well, I, they don't call them wizards. I, for the life of me, I cannot think. Maybe shamans? No. Because there's adepts, there's shamans, and then there's the wizardy types. Well, like I am right now am going through uh, what you were talking about and we were complaining about earlier where it's like difficult to see how this is organized because I'm trying to figure out where you are at and I'm just scrolling the through next it. Chapter. I'm, I'm, dude, that ship has sailed. I am on such a different page at this stage, I may as well give up. <laughs> okay, maybe I can find it's, it real quick. It's a, to do. You want to pause look, it for a second? We, it's, we cut this part no, out. no, no. It's a problem, guys. It is a problem that the contents and the glossary, at the, or index, rather, at the end of the book are essentially the same thing. When it's so dense with information that that's I cannot the, tell. That's one of my main problems with this game, honestly, is that they, like the, like the index in the beginning of the book, is like five pages long. And it's such extraneous little headings, too. It's, it's like, things this belongs like. in the index. Exactly. And the ind index is basic, uh, the index in the back of the book is basically the same thing, with even more detail. It's like, were you looking for sidebar number three? You'll find that here. <laughs> Keep yeah. going down until you hit... Actually, do you want to do a search? No, I got it. I got it. You found the Decker. The first thing is face. Uh, Does it say face? Do face colon. Okay. Up. No, it's, it's it's in red. Why is it in red? It I don't know. I'm just saying it's there. It took 47 seems, days, seems like boys and girls. It took me. We're, we're almost out of batteries. I, I got to get food and water for supplies. And you don't know any better because you're not the one editing this podcast. So I tell you, it took 47 days for this to happen. It took 47 days. Anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> so we had face and spellcasters. And then we were on deckers. And which it tells I, you the different types of spellcasters, <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Ah, uh, they got a priority table. Uh, that that with the face and then spellcaster and then Decker, I think is next, and then yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are those are basically your character classes, if you think about it that way. Okay. Technomancer, rigger, street samurai. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So and Shadowrun, there's about three or four different spellcasters. Okay. Um, you have your adept. What else is there, Morris? You have your shaman, right? Yeah, now I'm trying to see where it is in this red heading, because, again, not well organized. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the one thought I can say about Shadowrun. It, the core book is... It, to be frank, it fucking sucks when it comes to trying to find out where shit's at. You've got a lot of information. Once you figure out how shit works, it's not so bad, but it's it's... Yeah, okay, so I go down several to another red box, and I see magic user types. So we've got your adepts, your magicians. Yep. Your what? Magicians. Magician. That's the one I was trying to think of what the wizards. Those are your basic, basic wizards. Then you got aspected magicians and mystic Which, adepts. Mystic adepts have a little bit of magician and a little bit of adept. And then your adepts have what they have. Those are your body types. Your magicians are the ones that keep like, hey, I can summon things, I can throw magic at people, or I can influence people. 
And then you have, what was the other one? Uh, aspected magicians. Aspected magicians, which only have one type type of magic they can throw. So they can use sorcery, conjuring, or enchantment. So sorcery is basically, okay, I can throw magic at people. So I can throw a fireball at you or a lightning bolt or whatever. Conjuring is like, I can summon beings from the other planes to help me do things. And then you have your enchantments, which like, oh, I can magic up these weapons and armor and shit to help me do things. So those are your three different types of magicians. Okay. But adepts only get one part of that. They don't get the full three. They only can do one. But like I said, with the, the uh, adepted what? Adepted something. But anyways, they get one of those, plus they also can do adepts things. And I, I honestly like the full-fledged magician because, you know, I'm a wizard guy. I've always been a wizard guy. You've been a Pathfinder slash, you know, D&D slash whatever the hell you play. Now, one of the That's things... usually the first thing I play. I think we discussed in uh, the last podcast was about how there's no, uh, like, actual wizard type of caster in this setting, right? Where it's like... Your wizard is your magician, basically. But you're still it's kind of... It's not quite the same, but it's close. You're kind of closer to a sorcerer, though, right? Where it's like, you, you know what well, you know. Yeah, it's kind of thing. You, you know the spells you know, and you can cast them. You don't have to memorize, well, I memorize this spell four times a day. No, you can cast any of those spells as long as you still have the the fortitude and stuff to be able to do that. And basically, you did, I'm going to cast a spell with superpower. Well, that's going to take more energy than, say, I'm just going to cast it to the lowest setting possible. That's the way this system works. Um, so this system is a little more friendly when it comes to wizards, but it's also... If you try to overcast or whatever you want to call it, it's, it's a lot more difficult. Because, like, you can cast any spell in this system as long as you have it memorized. And you can cast it more powerfully as long as you spend the resources to do so. And in that way, I like it a lot better than, say, you know, Pathfinder was, you know, D&D or anything. Because you don't have to, it's not a level spell thing. It's more of, like, how much effort you put into casting the spell. You it's just, more Dresden Universe. I was going to say, you just like it because it's Dresden Files. <laughs> I was going to say, well, it's more Dresden Universe, if you think about it. It really is. It's how much effort you put into casting that spell. And if you use too much effort, then it's harder to cast the next spell kind of thing. So makes sense to me for as a logistical sort of thing rather than hey, this is the system sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, all you need is a focus rod you can use as a cudgel when time uh, time allows. Blasting rod, blasting rod. <laughs> it's a blasting rod in Dresden, damn it. He broke, broke it for the last few... I'm, I'm still getting caught up. He had it broke for the last few books, so it's just been his staff he where I'm at. shit more than just about anybody I've ever seen, but yeah. <laughs> but that's also what makes it interesting, because he does break his shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I can relate, because I'm pretty hard on the things that I own as well, so... Yeah, me too, so I... I'm sorry, I just love trends, and that's... I just... Yeah. It's just there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So it's a good, it's a good, it's a good book series. Period. Just read it. Shut that's up and read it, people. Yeah, that's uh, probably all we have time for on this podcast. Trying to yep. s stick to our limit again. Uh, we could talk about like cult investigators and street shamans, a lot of fun stuff. Maybe next time. Hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll both be a little bit more interested in the subject and whatever. Is there any last shout-outs you want to throw to anybody out there that we want to get out of the way before we hang her up? Email the damn podcast like I keep telling you to do. Yeah, email the podcast, people. You know, hey, if you, got, if you want us to talk about a game, we'll, we'll yeah. investigate it, whatever. If I, if I, I respond to, to comments... I'd be more than happy to try to do it. If I respond I like to comments, I'm going to respond to the email. You just need to send it. So let us know what your questions are. <laughs> we will do it on a podcast. If you want us to, hey, hey, Mike, uh, Morris, will you talk about, I don't know, um, uh, RuneQuest? That's a perfect example. If you want us to, hey, I'll look it up and I'll you know, try to give you my honest, unbiased, well, now it's going to be biased. But <laughs> opinion, I will give you my opinion. 
<laughs> we give opinions. We uh, we say nothing about them being unbiased. You might not like my opinion, but I will give it to you. And, and generally, most systems, most games, I really do like. And unless you're absolute crap, I do will like you. Hell, if you want to send me a, a thing to review for free, I'd be more than happy to. Because that's just more shit I get to read. And I like to read, people. So, send it out. That's what I'm saying. Send me, send me free copies. I will review you, it. You hear that? I, if you want well, me to, that's I'll Mike you kissing your I'm ass right, right now to get you it. to send him something. It. Well, <laughs> but to be fair, if we ever were sent something for free, we would put that disclaimer out there. You could so. do a review. <laughs> An advice for you, by the way. I'm not going to give you a better review just because you sent it to me for free. No, still, again, a totally biased review. Like, I'm biased about the things that I like. Oh. Like, Shadowrun is another thing I'm going to hit at. Uh, like, I I will forgive sloppy, uh, you know, like, organization, and I will forgive mechanics that aren't quite there so long as you have a good story, which this the appears to have. story is excellent in Shadowrun. Yeah, so, I mean, like, the, I'm hooked at that. And the mechanics aren't even that bad. It's just the organization is a little musky. Yeah. So uh, for any Shadowrun people out there listening, please fix that shit because it just doesn't make any sense the way you do it. All right. But uh, you don't need the huge introductions. Let's put it that way. Anyways. Or you know, segregate, segregate them out so that, like, here's the, your introduction section. Here's me. Anyway, we are way out Basically, of time. Basically, if you have more than two pages of introduction, you went wrong somewhere. Way out of time. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yes. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you do it again. Because, yeah, we need more viewers. <laughs> or listeners, or whatever. Give it to us, baby. Mike the Pathetic. We'll catch you next time, kids. Keep it nerdy. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter, under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Hey kids, did you enjoy the video in this podcast or was it kind of wasting my time to put video in? Uh, let us know either in the comments or at volantrix at gmail.com. Volantrix is spelled V-A-L-A-N. T-R-I-X. You know, you can let us know about that because we do want feedback from you guys. Um, or if that doesn't suit, like I've got a brain teaser for you this time around. So let's say we've got one of these dumb refrigerators that we keep making in the 21st century, you know, with like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and it can tell you when to reorder milk. Yeah, nobody seems to be able to tell me why we need these refrigerators in the first place. But OK, you've got one of these refrigerators. And you're in Shadowrun. And somehow, through a turn of events, like, a mega corporation was trying to get a hold of an AI that's gone rogue. And, like, it's in this refrigerator. Don't ask me why. I mean, like, maybe the, the compression on refrigerator hard drives are super good. I don't know. But, like, they've chased the AI into this refrigerator. And they've cut it off from the network. And they're going to destroy it. Does that constitute murder to kill a sentient AI on a refrigerator? And, uh, like, what if something happened that was really dumb, like, I don't know, some socially backward orc or a troll or something was, like, in love with the AI on the fridge because it was the only thing that was ever nice to him or something and, like, is hiring you to save his loved one? If you fail, would that be, like, letting somebody die? Uh, let us know. Volantrix at gmail.com. I'm super sure Mike will be very happy with me for starting that conversation. Okay, talk to you later, kids. Bye.